Churches of Christ present Speaking the Truth in Love, a program bringing you life's answers from the Word of God. Welcome to Speaking the Truth in Love. My name is Kenny Townsley. I'm the preacher for the Cave City Church of Christ. I want to personally thank all the congregations that make this broadcast possible. At the end of this program, there will be a list of those that scroll down your screen. If you ever have the opportunity to visit, you would be welcomed. If a question ever comes up from a program like this or in your own Bible study, reach out to those congregations. Reach out to the congregation at Nettleton or myself individually. We would love to be able to help you find the Bible answer. Fulfilling the, the title of this program, Speaking the Truth in Love. As I was putting together a series of lessons and, and going back and doing some studies in the book of Genesis and, and looking at the, the events surrounding the garden, this lesson came from that series. It, it's one that is something that is so alive and well in the world that we live today and yet has such deep history literally back to the beginning. I want us to begin in Genesis chapter 3 as we look at this lesson. Starts there in the very first verse. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, if you're following along, you know we skipped a verse. Because verse 4 says this, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's the part I wanted us to focus on. That's why I was hoping as we were going through, if you were following along, you was like, oh, well, he skipped a verse. 
No, we wanted to go back. Because if we were titling this lesson and under the heading of Lessons from the Garden, we would have to say that you can always find someone who will tell you what you want to hear. And at this particular moment, whatever the circumstances were, Eve wanted to hear those simple words, you shall not surely die. He goes on and adds to it and says that, you know, your eyes are going to be opened and, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It's kind of one of those days. He had her at you shall not surely die. And you think about that. And we, we see throughout the Bible, and honestly, we can see in our own lives this same exact thing coming about time and time again if we're not careful. People telling us what we want to hear. We live in a world of information. We have access to more information now than at any time throughout history. And yet, it is more difficult to know what information is actually true and correct. And in that, we have to understand our responsibility ultimately is to hold fast to the words that we hold in our hands. Be able to go and to understand and to wade through measuring things against what the Bible says. Not just what a man, a group of people, or whoever it may be may say. Because we understand that the devil walks about seeking whom he may devour. Guess what? It's that same devil that is talked about over in the New Testament, that adversary of ours that was here beguiling Eve in the garden, telling her what she wanted to hear. I can't help but think of a passage over in 1 Kings. It's a story I've, I've grown to love just because of the, the idea of it, and it's, it seems very similar to some things that we see in the world today. When you get to 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter, you start there in verse 3. It says, And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. The great thing is, the king here, the king of Israel here, wanted to know what God had to say. So he said to Jehoshaphat, can, can we not inquire of the word of the Lord? Notice what happens in verse 6. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. That's what he wanted to hear, wasn't it? There was 400 of these prophets told Jehoshaphat, Go, the Lord shall deliver it into the hand. And then you see verse 7. And Jehoshaphat said, Is not there here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. If you continue on reading, if you go down through and you see the rest of this story, you see verse 13 says, And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Even the messenger that was going to get Micaiah was saying, Look, all these other prophets have said, it's all, everything's good, the battle will be given. You, you fall in and, and say the same thing. And then notice verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. 
Now, if you want to know what would fix a lot of the information problems in the world that we live today, that verse would fix it. Because if we go about speaking the things that the Lord has given us to say, the information cannot be false. The information cannot be wrong. The information is what we're supposed to hear, what we need to hear. And you know, the thing is, some will even, even use Bible. Let's, let's think about some things in the world that we live today where, where man twists and, and rests the Scripture to their own destruction, as it were. In Exodus, when you see in verse 21, or chapter 21, verse 24 of chapter 21, probably a, a familiar passage to you. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Now there's a lot of people in the world today, they want to go back to the Bible and they want to say, see, here's what the Bible says. They, they want to go back and, and they open the Bible and say, look, you know, we're, we're supposed to be eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But they don't consider the, whole, consider the whole counsel of God. In Matthew chapter 5, when you see there Jesus Christ himself speaking, if you're very familiar with your Bible, you know what happens, what begins in, in Matthew chapter 5. It, it starts by a pronouncement of blessings, beginning that sermon that we call the Sermon on the Mount. All those blessed R's and, and begins that way. And as he continues down through, you get down to verse 38 of this lengthy passage, this sermon that is given there. Jesus Christ himself makes the statement, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Here's that word, but. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love him which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Information is vital in the world that we live. Correct information is vital in the world that we live. But it is much more important in the spiritual world, in the spiritual life that we lead. Because you can. You can open the Bible and you can say, look, the Bible says an eye for an eye. But we see that Jesus Christ clears that up. Jesus Christ expounds on that teaching, giving us how we, as Christians, followers of Christ, in that example, are to be, how to lead our life. And it's not the only place. We know that, you know, so many people talk about how money is the root of all evil when the Bible clearly says it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. And, and, and there's others that we could look at. But we have to understand that we have a responsibility, especially in things of the Bible, most importantly in things of the Bible, that we have to confirm the things that are said. Because you can find... Spiritually speaking, you can find someone who will speak whatever you want them to speak and even use pieces, parts, sections of the Bible to prove what they're saying, even though they're not considering the whole counsel of God. That's where the responsibility falls to us. There's an example, such a great example. It's, it's just a very quick mention. It's something that is uh, often just kind of read over very quickly, but in Acts chapter 17, there's a group of people that literally, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit, get called out in the pages of the Bible as being those that were doing that confirming, making sure that they were understanding not only what was being taught, but making sure it was true. Acts chapter 17, 
when you get to verse 10, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These, those in Berea, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Notice why. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Now think about it. There was two things there that's mentioned that caused them to be more noble. They received the word with all readiness of mind, but it didn't stop there. I'm going to make a statement. There are many that will hear this lesson who will go into an assembly and they will hear the preacher speak and they will never check and make sure what he's saying is so. They will never open their Bibles to confirm the things that are said there. I'm going to tell you, never do that. Always go and, and search the Scriptures. That's why I like to make sure even myself and, and lay, the, lay the Scripture bare as it were. Open it up to see the Word there because someone, there will always be someone who will tell you what you want to hear. And just because we want to hear it doesn't make it true. Just because it's what is easy for us, and we'll talk about some of those things as we go through the rest of this lesson. Now we do have a responsibility, and as a matter of fact, if you think about it, in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, we have a responsibility to speak. There is no doubt about that. We, we have the, the instruction that we are to, well, we'll just read it. 1 Peter, chapter 4. When you get there to verse 11, it says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you want to know what the basic problem was, going all the way back to the garden, literally going into the story of the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat and Micaiah and all of those things, and even now in the world that we live, if you want to know why, we have so many who are willing to say whatever it is someone wants to hear, it's because they want the glory themselves, not give the glory. How did it put it there? All things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, that we give God all things of glory through Jesus Christ. That's the, the key to this whole thing. There are a lot of people who have the opportunity to speak who stand maybe even in a pulpit, who want the glory for themselves. Or maybe they're on a local news channel, a national news channel, or whatever it may be. Those are things of this life. We're talking about things of the spiritual matter. And if we're going to speak, we must speak as the oracles of God. We have a responsibility. If you remember the love that Paul had for Timothy was great. There's just no other way to put it. The, the instructions that he gave him, the, the encouragement that was given is, is such a beautiful thing to read. And, and we're going to look at some of those things. We're going to read in 2 Timothy there in the fourth chapter. We'll see the, uh, the instructions given to Timothy by Paul and, and how specific he gets starts out in verse 1 saying, I charge thee, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. This is the exact same thing we've talked about the whole time today. We know that this passage is very specific. There are those that will have itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. They want to hear smooth things as the Bible talks about being prophesied the smooth things. But notice it goes on in verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. 
That's the key. We have to prove our ministry. When we make a statement, whatever it may be, we have to have proof of it. In the physical world that we live, that has been lost. In the spiritual world that we live, unfortunately, it has been lost as well. We have to guard against it. How did it say here in verse 5? But watch thou. Make sure that you're not doing those things. Make sure that the things that are being said can be proved. Let's go ahead and since we're there, we'll read verse 16 of chapter 3. This passage you know. It's one you could probably quote as we began to read it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. Notice all of the things that surround that though. We oftentimes, we see that passage, we pull it out and, and we love it and we, we, we quote it, but there's more to it. Start with me in verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto all good works. That's the context of the idea of all scripture being given by inspiration of God. Why is that? It's because he gave us everything we need to make sure we're being told the truth, to make sure that we're telling the truth, to make sure that we're guiding others into salvation. And notice, to guide, we have to be going. Our salvation is that important. These scriptures that it talks about, the holy scriptures that he had known from a child, they will guide and make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. If you go back just a little bit, he, he speaks a little bit more about this idea of those who have been given over to fables. In chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, he says there in verse 14, of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Notice, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. That's the whole crux of this matter. If we go about teaching error, if I go through this life and, and, and teach error in my physical life, if I hold to certain beliefs about certain things in the physical life, probably not going to harm anyone. But if I go through this life teaching error, in the things of the Bible. If I go through this life giving myself over to those words of no profit mentioned in verse 14 of chapter 2, it talks about there subverting the hearers. On down in the last verse that we read, overthrowing the faith of some. We already read the passage. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Let him teach the truth that God has given us. Not the instructions, not the ideas, not, not our own imaginations. Not those profane and vain babblings that so many were given over to. Let's read 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. Let's look at a, a passage there that goes along with this. It's, it's the very last part of the book of 1 Timothy. And as you see here, and as we've mentioned, we know that Paul loved Timothy greatly. Matter of fact, we know that he wanted to send him on into the Philippian brethren because they had supported him and he wanted a good report and he was the one that was trusted. But the last two verses of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 20 and 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings 
and oppositions, oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Think about that. Paul, an inspired apostle, to one of the people on this earth that he loved as much as any, finalizing a letter, putting the last pen to paper as it were, he says, keep that which is committed to thy trust. That would be my instruction as we go through this particular lesson. This has been committed to our trust and we have to be diligent because we can always find somebody who is willing to tell us what we want to hear. We have to guard against that. Guide our lives with the Word of God and when we speak, speak as the oracles of God. Speak as He has given us instruction and guard ourselves, making sure that we are speaking what God wants us to say, not what man wants us to hear. Thank you for your attention. If you have a Bible question, would like to receive a free Bible correspondence course, would like a copy of two free books, Why I'm a Member of the Church of Christ, and Basic Bible Lessons, please contact the Nettleton Church of Christ. Speaking the Truth in Love can be viewed online. Speaking the Truth in Love is brought to you by these area churches of Christ.